All right, welcome back. So today we are going to be continuing our conversation of solving systems. Last time we talked about how to solve systems by graphing, which is when we have two lines, if it'll work, there we go, that intersect and we call the point of intersection, this spot right here is going to be the solution. And a lot of you were asking, hey, but what if we don't have a graph? How are we going to be solving these systems? And that's a great question. Today, we're going to be talking about one way to solve these systems, which is by what's called substitution. So before we start to go into, let's just think about what it means to substitute. If you have any, um, any sport background to it, if you make a, a substitution, you're exchanging a player for a player, right? If you go out to eat and... Um, you want to substitute a certain side for another one. Well, then you're changing it one for one. So we're going to be using this idea of replacing, of substituting, exchanging in order to solve these systems of equations. So without further ado, let's begin. So this is the front side of your guide notes. You can use substitution to solve a system of equations if one of the equations is already solved for a variable. That means that one of the variables is all alone on one side of the equation, and then there's other terms on the other side. So in, in the example, we have y is equal to x plus 2, and 3x plus y is equal to 10. Those are the two equations that are going to be in our system. And we want to figure out the point of intersection, the solution of this system, where we have the same coordinate point in both equations that give a true statement. So we have y is equal to x plus 2 and 3x plus y is equal to 10. Well, the first step is we have to choose the equation to use as what we call the substitute. Well, we're going to use the first equation, y is equal to x plus 2, because it already is solved for a variable. We have y isolated. It's y equals x plus 2. So we already know what y is equal to. Whatever x plus 2 turns out to be, that's going to be the value of y. So y is equal to x plus 2. So from here, what we can actually start, start to do is we can start our substitution process. We're going to replace in the other equation, 3x plus y is equal to 10. We're going to replace that y with x plus 2. So now we have 3x plus x plus 2 is equal to 10. And again, the reason is we're dealing with the same value. We know that y is equal to x plus 2. So we're going to replace the y with x plus 2. And we got that from that first equation. We know y is equal to x plus 2. So we're going to substitute where we see a y in the other equation for x plus 2. And now we're going to combine like terms and solve. And we're going to find that the x has to have a value of 2. So whatever solution of our, of our system is, the x-coordinate has to be 2 because we combined the two equations together and we were able to figure out, okay, if I'm combining these, well, my x now has a value of 2. And if you look back in the example, once we hit the point right here and below, there's no more y. We only are dealing with the x variable because we replaced any, anytime we saw y, we replaced that with x plus 2. So there should no longer be a y variable because we replaced it with x plus 2. And the only variable that we have right now is going to be x. So we solve for x and we get that x is equal to 2. So now once we have x being equal to 2, we're now going to take it and we're going to substitute x is equal to 2 into one of the original equations to find the value of y. It doesn't matter which equation we substitute the x value of 2 into because this coordinate point is going to be on both of the lines. This coordinate point, whatever it is, 2 comma y, whatever the y value is, should be on both of these equations. It should give you a true statement for both of them. So it doesn't matter which equation we choose, we just have to choose one of them. Personally, I find it's easiest to work with 
the equation that we substituted in. So we started again with y is equal to x plus 2. Well, we already have y isolated. So let's just plug x into that equation. So we get y is equal to 2 plus 2, which is 4. So now the solution is going to be 2 comma 4. The x value comma the y value. And once, and once we have that, we can now go back and check to make sure that 2 comma 4 works for both equations. So we're going to substitute in our x and y value in both of the equations because it should give a true statement since these this coordinate point should be on the line. So we substitute them in and we figure out that the coordinate point is indeed on both of the lines. It satisfies each equation. It gives a true statement for each equation. Awesome. With this in mind, please work on the guide notes questions one through four and resume when you are ready to move on. All right, if you listen to my voice, that means that you have worked on the front side of the guide notes and you're ready to move on to the back side. So sometimes you may need to solve one of the equations for a variable before we solve with substitution. In the first example, we had a variable isolated. It was y was equal to x plus 2. But sometimes we're going to have a situation where neither of the variables, x or y, are isolated and we are going to have to figure them out. So let's say we're given the example of the system y minus x is equal to 4 and 2x plus 3y is equal to 27. We have to choose one of these equations to isolate a variable for. So I'm going to choose to use the first equation. I'm going to try to solve for y. Because if we look at it, y has a coefficient of positive 1. So if we can just move the x term over to the other side, then it's going to be a lot easier for us to use y as the value that we're going to be substituting in for. So if we add x to both sides, we get y is equal to x plus 4. And now we have a variable that's isolated. We have y is equal to x plus 4. So we can re eventually re substitute the value of y into the other equation to figure out the value of x. So now that we have the value of y. We know y is equal to x plus 4. So wherever we see a y, we can replace it with x plus 4 because they're equal. They're the same value. They're just written differently. So we're going to go into the other equation, the equation that we did not use. Now remember, we have y is equal to x plus 4. So wherever we see a y, we're going to replace it with x plus 4. So now what's different about this example is that we have three times y. So we have to simplify by using the distributive property here. This is three times the value of y. And we know the value of y is x plus four. So we have to multiply three to x plus four. So we use the distributive property and we get two x plus three x plus 12 is equal to 27 because we did three times x, which is three x and three times four, which is 12. We're then going to combine some like terms, and just like we would in any one variable equation, we're going to solve for x, and we get x is equal to 3. Now, in the past two examples, we've figured out the value of x first by isolating the y. You can do it the opposite way. If you have x is equal to 5 plus y, or x is equal to 2y minus 8, I have no idea. But if you have x is isolated, then you can use that to substitute. In the past two examples, we've just had y is, is equal to it because typically we see in slope-intercept form y is equal mx plus b. So we typically see that y is going to be the variable isolated. But you can definitely have x being the variable that's isolated. That is a total possibility here. So now that we have figured out x, we're going to go back and we are going to substitute in the value of x being 3 into one of the original equations to then find the value of y. Remember, it doesn't matter which equation we use here because we are going to have the same coordinate point shared between them. So we can substitute the value of x into any of them. So when, when we substitute in y minus x is equal to 4, 
We have y minus 3 is equal to 4, therefore y is 7, and the solution is 3 comma 7. So now we're just going to check by substituting in the coordinate point into both of the equations. When we check them, we figure out that 4 is equal to 4, 27 is equal to 7, meaning that we do have a true statement and that we're going to have a solution to the system. Now, before I send you out to your uh, guide and note practice, I want to go over one quick example that I'm just going to make up and I'm going to show you how, how we would do it. Let's say we have the equations, I don't know, y is equal to 3x plus 2 and we have y is equal to 4x minus 5. Again, I'm just making these up. I don't know the actual solution of this. But you notice in this situation, we have y is equal to 3x plus 2, and y is also equal to 4x minus 5. So we can actually set 3x plus 2 and 4x minus 5 equal to each other, because y is equal to both of them. So we're going to take this 4x minus 5, and we're going to replace it with that y. So we have 4x minus 5 is then equal to 3x plus 2. Because remember, this was y is equal to this stuff here, and y was also equal to this stuff here. So y is technically equal to y. It's equal to itself. We just write it in different forms. Awesome. With that in mind, please go and work on the guided notes, problems five and six. If you have any questions, please let me know. Keep up the great work, folks, and I will talk to you soon.